Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. So when I say the name Pebio, what do you think of? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? If you answered paint, you would be correct. However, some of you may not be aware that Pebio has a full array of art materials that I love to use. Now, I do a lot of mixed media work besides, you know, doing acrylic pouring. I'm actually more of a mixed media slash resin artist. So I've been using their products for many, many years. And when I saw they were having a new program, they released a new program for artists called the SAW program, S-A-W program, I applied and I'm happy to announce that I was accepted. So I am filled with joy. So what that means is periodically, maybe once or twice throughout the year, they will send me some products that I like to use to create my art. It's a sponsorship. Now I'm not getting paid or there's no coupon discount, anything like that. But I thought because recently I've been showing a little more mixed media on this channel that I would show you some of the things. And most of these things you can find in like Michael's, uh, Jerry's, Blick, places like that. So they sell a beautiful modeling paste that has a crackle effect that I'm really anxious to use. They have their own brand of resin, believe it or not, called Crystal Resin, not to be confused with the other Crystal Resin. This I see in Michael's all the time. This one is a little bit different. Now this one, you mix two doses of resin, they say, with one dose of hardener. So it's a two to one ratio. But I mention this because at Michael's, you can use your, your coupons, right? So they do sell this there. Then, you know, they have their beautiful paints that we all love. They have these beautiful gilding waxes that I cannot wait to use. Now you saw me use a different brand of this stuff in one of my videos, but let's say you take a stencil and you just uh, use some modeling paste and make a little stencil on a canvas. Take some of this and just lightly rub it over the raised part of the stencil and you'll get a beautiful bronzy uh, pattern, right? So you have that stuff. They have the, all different kinds of products. You know, they have their own pouring medium that I'm going to be trying today. Uh, pigments for resin. And somebody recently just asked me to incorporate some golding, uh, gold leaf into my painting, my acrylic pour painting, which I'm going to be doing soon. They even have the, the kits with the CERN relief. Now this stuff you can use in molds, resin molds. You can outline inside the mold with this. It's 3D. Let it dry and then pour your resin in and pop it out. Have a beautiful thing. You can do some 3D line work in your acrylic pours. So you know me. I love, love, love to take the acrylic pour to the next step. I just don't want it to be an acrylic pour. So Pebio has you covered in that department. So I implore you, take a look, go onto Pebio's website. I'm going to link it in the description and just look around at all the different things that they sell in our local stores, okay? Now they are based out of Canada for United States citizens. You're probably better off going to Jerry's, Blick, Michael's, and like I said, using your, your coupon to get these products with your discount. So what I'm going to do today though, is an acrylic pour. I have some Pepio pouring medium that I have never tried. This is my first time trying it. I am going to show you how to mix your paints up with a pouring medium. We're also going to add a little flow trial to get some special effects. So we're gonna essentially make our own custom pouring medium. And I'm also going to maybe use some silicone. It doesn't hold me back. The, the fact that I have to clean it and all that doesn't hold me back. I love using it. Love the outcome. So let me show you how to mix up your paints and make your own custom pouring medium by using a pouring medium and other things. And we'll see what kind of reactions we get. 
So when you go to make your own custom pouring medium, there are some things you need to ask yourself. A, what kind of effects do I want? And B, am I going to resin this painting or varnish it afterwards? Those are the two main questions you need to ask yourself, and here is why. We'll start with the easier side here. If you are going to resin or varnish, it's going to change the ingredients that you're going to want to add into your paints. Same thing if you're not going to do it. It's going to change the ingredients that you're going to need in your paints. So a lot of people don't know this. You can make a homemade pouring medium that covers this and this right here. How? Well, you use products that dry with a shine and that also create this lacing and cells. However, if you're going to resin or varnish, why waste the money and add those products when the resin or varnish are going to give you the shine in the end? I hope that makes sense. So let me show you. Something like a pouring medium, a gloss pouring, pouring medium on top of it all, is going to create a shiny effect on your surface when your paints are dried. However, it is not going to so much create a lot of this on its own. In combination with Floetrol, it will. So that's why we need to, to kind of understand what we're adding here. It's almost, I always refer to making a pot of sauce, you know, if you add oregano, you're going to get a different flavor than if you were to add something like rosemary, right? So you have to kind of understand that and figure out what it is that you're looking for out of a pouring medium. So a lot of people will use this one simple recipe, which calls for Floetrol, some pouring medium, and some water. And that covers all of this and then if they want to go ahead and still varnish or resin they will do it on top of that but maybe you can't afford to buy you know the bottle of pouring medium and maybe you can't afford to buy the resin then you're going to have to look into cheaper alternatives to get that shine which would be something like a polycrylic clear uh, gloss varnish or maybe you don't like lacing and cells in your paintings so you're going to get rid of the, the flow trawl and you're just going to stick with a, a pouring medium or even glue and water if you wanted so in my on my channel there's tabs up the top one says home videos playlists community if you click on the playlists you're going to see a back to basics section and in there there are there are tons of recipe videos covering from you know just paint and water all the way up to the more fancier ones that include you know tons of ingredients but for today what i'm going to do is make a very simple basic flow trawl pouring medium slash pouring me <laughs> But it's very confusing. I'm making a homemade pouring medium using real pouring medium and Floetrol and some water, okay? The water will be dependent on the color and what it looks like once I mix my, my homemade pouring medium into my paint. If it's too thick, then I'll add the water. If it's not, then I'll just leave it alone. And one other thing I'm going to teach you how to do today is I'm going to teach you how to pre-mix your paint so that it will be good for all techniques if you want to use it. And here's why I'm saying that. A lot of people want to pre-mix their paints and put them in these great squeeze bottles I get from Loli Vefe. Link is in the description. Here's the thing though. Let's say you pre-mix a bunch of paints to do a Dutch pour for today. Your paint that's going to be in this bottle is going to be too thin for all of the other acrylic pouring techniques. So now you're kind of stuck with just some Dutch pour 
consistency paint, right? Now, yes, you can put some in a cup and try to add a little more paint to thicken it up, but I'm going to show you the easier way of doing that. And that would be to make the paint at its thickest, put it in the bottle, and then if you want to do a Dutch pour, thin it with a little bit of water by pouring just some of that mixture into a cup and using the cup. Because the Dutch pour is the only technique that is the thinnest. Now, unless you're, or the pearl cell too, but that one's got all different ingredients, so it wouldn't, you know, qualify for what was in this bottle. But unless you're going to do nothing but Dutch pours, I would mix my paints like this, put them in the bottles, and then when I want to do a Dutch pour, thin it out because there are three consistencies for acrylic pouring. There's one for the pearl cell technique. I'm sorry, there's four. One for the pearl cell technique, one for Dutch pours, one for the bloom, and then all the other techniques follow under that fourth category. So if you're somebody like me that likes to do all of the techniques, follow what I do today. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. So as I said today, I'm working with a very common recipe today that a lot of artists use, which is the one part of Floetrol, which I'm filling up to one cup, to the one part of the Pebeo pouring medium. So I'm going to fill that up a cup worth also. So now I have two cups of my homemade pouring medium and I'm just giving it a swirl. Now, if I don't use all of this, I will put it away. And I will definitely not use all of that. So we will be doing that. So let me just mix up one color with you and just know that all of my colors are going to be mixed like this today. So depending on how much paint you want to make in this color is going to determine how much paint you put into the cup. So no matter what size cup I use, I always kind of just cover the bottom with some paint you know, maybe fill it not even a quarter of the way full, the cup, with paint. And then what I do is I slowly start adding in my pouring medium. I don't want to add it all too fast because it can clump up on me. Especially a metallic color or anything that has a mica in it, like this product does here. This, by the way, is the iridescent green yellow beautiful metallic lime green color love it okay so just a little bit out of the time until it gets to the right consistency which by the way is going to be a number three on the consistency chart if you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a video and a chart in the description that you can watch and print out. And that will teach you, It will, I should say, it will communicate to you how thick my paints are here in my house by doing a drip test. So make sure you check out that video, especially if you're struggling with consistency. Now, I'm going to continue adding my pouring medium until I reach that consistency. However, had this been just a regular color, not a metallic color, I would have used some water to thin it the rest of the way. But I do not like to add a lot of water into anything that has a shimmer because it tends to dry grainy. So... That is why I'm using more pouring medium. We're getting very close here.
All right, so that's good. It's forming a mound on a mound. That's a really nice consistency for all of your acrylic pouring, except for the Dutch pour, the pearl cell technique, and the bloom. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to mix up my red, the rest of my colors, and we'll get back, and we're going to play with these cool guys that I found at Walmart. That would be fun. So as I had mentioned before, pre-mixing paints. I'm going to use that same color again. This is, in my opinion, the best way to do it because now this paint is ready for all of the acrylic pores except for those main four I keep mentioning. I'm gonna put it in here. And now if I wanted to do a Dutch pour or something that it requires it to be thinner, then I'll pour some out into a cup and thin it out with a little bit of water versus trying to pour some of this that's too thin into a cup add paint to it, now it's too thick, add, it, it'd be a lot easier this way, okay? So if you're a person that likes to do all different techniques, I'm telling you this way works the best for me. And then they're stored in their nice little bottles and you don't have to worry about it. This was obviously black paint before, now it's gonna be green. Also, if you're a person like me that wants to store your paint in a bottle and wants to do different techniques and wants to use silicone, you're most definitely going to have to pour some out into a cup and put the silicone in because you don't want to put silicone into the whole bottle of paint unless you're going to use nothing but silicone, right, in all of your paintings. So now what I would have to do is take some of my pre-mixed paint and put it in a cup, however much I'm gonna need of that one color, and add my few drops of silicone to it, okay? That's it, two little drops. Give it a mix. If you want big, large cells, mix it in only a couple of times. If you want them really, really tiny, mix it in really, really good. So for colors, I have a, an array of Pebeo colors. Mars Black, Titanium White are my base colors. I'm going to do a split. Then I'm going to do a funnel down the center of the split uh, with a bunch of vibrant colors. And we'll take it from there. I'm not saying this is just going to be a funnel pour but I want to use this contraption here to put the paint down the center of the canvas there and then we'll see where my mind takes me after that. So got some beautiful vibrant colors as I said. Um, I guess we'd be doing an acrylic pour from 1984 <laughs> with all the hot neons. So there's a phrase that comes to mind when I rewatch this and I do the voice over and that is the struggle is real. Let me tell you, this painting gave me a run for my money. <laughs> you know, when you're not doing a typical type of technique, we'll use the Dutch pour, for example, you're, you know what the composition is supposed to look like and you aim to make that composition. When you're doing any other kind of acrylic pour that's not the typical, like a ring pour or a Dutch pour or a swipe, you really have to use your imagination to get to the composition and to create a painting that you like. So for me, I had this vision of these beautiful, bright fluorescent colors flowing through the center that made sense when I looked at it. And I couldn't get there on this one. So I I tried and I tried and finally 
I remembered the person that told me, please, Tammy, incorporate gold leaf into your work. So what my plan is for this painting is to let it dry and then do a separate tutorial using the gold leaf that Pevio was so kind to send me and show you how you can incorporate that into an acrylic pour. Side note, can we just talk about this beautiful funnel? It was so pretty. But anyway, I'm not going to blab on. I'm going to let you watch my process and see how this turned out. The painting still turned out pretty cool. I love the colors I ended up with and the composition is different and I like different. So that's a plus. So I'm going to hush for now and I will be back. Just know, however, once I teach you how to mix paints and the different techniques of how they should go, the rest is up to you. We all struggle. We all have failures. We all use those failures as a learning experience. And I choose not to even see them as a failure uh, because I did not achieve the look I was going for today. That's not a failure. It's just another door that opened for me to now take this painting and create something even more beautiful than what I originally had intended. So look at it like that.
so I'm just adding in a little more black negative space and then I'm going to give you a close up so I thought this composition would work well for that gold leafing I want to do. So here we go. Not what I envisioned, but still a pretty painting. I like it. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to resin it and then we're going to add that gold leafing like I was requested to do. So stay tuned for a future video on that. I love the colors. We do have shimmer in there. And yeah. So I hope you learned something of value today. And uh, hope you decide to come back. Lots of fun on this channel and lots of learning, that's for sure. So thank you for joining me. And uh, don't forget to check out the description for all the information on my social media and all of that. Places to follow me. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to see maybe if we can do a Pepeo giveaway. I heard rumors, so stay tuned for that. I love you all, and until the next time, happy pouring.